for guys who learn before they do things. Welcome to meet James Herbert Harrison. My guest today, and he's an author of several books featuring Ukraine, and one of them is Miracle from Ukraine. Hello, James. Good afternoon. I'm so happy you found the time to join us today and make this video, not only about your book, but also about your life, because you are a living evidence of what you can do to be happily married to a Ukrainian woman, yet more, you've written a book about it and now sharing your personal experience, which is invaluable. The book is a bottomless well of knowledge about life in Ukraine from the inside and is describing Ukrainian characters, traditions, is talking about everyday life and culture as they are, with plus and minuses, and with the reality as it is. And it's cool to read, by the way. And um, James is the best person to give expanded answers uh, to men who are my clients or maybe possible clients uh, who want to come to Ukraine and meet Ukrainian women because, you know, there are so many objections and little knowledge about international love relations that I want to have true experts talk about this and help men learn more. Besides being an author, as I've said, James is happily married uh, to his Ukrainian wife, and they have a, a wonderful son, now 14, right? Just turned. Yeah. Uh, so I will ask some personal questions so you can share, James. Are you okay? We're good. We're ready. Okay. All right. Uh, so... So we can learn more from your experience as well as a, as a like uh, happily ever after kind of thing, right? So the book is like this happens, but then what happens? What is happily ever after? There you go. So uh, I have my questions. So get your popcorn, sit down and watch a good video about how things happen and what things work. And honest and direct answers on many things you want to know about Ukraine and maybe you don't want to know about Ukraine but when you when you learn you'll be happy about it and it will help to build your plan on how to conquer the heart of a beautiful Ukrainian lady who's not only beautiful but there is more to that so my first question James to you is like you ventured to go to Ukraine looking for a Ukrainian bride why what is so valuable about Ukrainian women? That well, I think I, th I think I'm probably speaking for a majority of guys that are watching this video. And and I got divorced. I went through kind of a tough divorce, and I was middle aged. I'd kind of resigned for a little bit on even you know ever having uh, uh, a relationship with a woman or even getting married again. I, I went through a period where I forget about it. And even though I did have an older teenage son to raise myself, but after a little while, you you know you do get lonely, and and you know with this internet, you you get on your computer at night and you're looking around, and and uh, it just so happens that my insert my insurance agent when I lived in California was married to a Russian gal. She was his office manager, so I got to know them fairly good, and I was pretty impressed with her so i don't know maybe that's why i uh somehow ventured on these websites and ended up with uh mm. some of these you know ukrainian russian bride websites so There's what so did many. you like what um you saw your uh, insurance agent's uh, experience what what was good about that lady well she was beautiful okay. and um but just the way she kind of conducted herself, she, you know, she, she always dressed like she's ready to go to a ball. It seemed like, and uh, even when you, I would bump and you know, see her at the grocery store, you know, she she wouldn't be in, you know, sweatpants, and you know, she you know, always wore brassiere. It always fix, you know, she she's always conscious about making herself look good. And I guess you don't realize that's important until you it sticks out because you're so used to the opposite. 
and uh, too many women, I you know, in our culture in the West, they've just uh, kind of anything goes. And uh, you don't think it's a big deal till you see, you know, what's possible. And I and I was intrigued by always intrigued by her accent and uh, you know just yeah mm, nice okay so overall beauty which is number one for men I don't question that but also pre uh, self presentation and care right and the way she handled different life situations was appealing to you right well exactly and I got to know her husband Tom very well. And, uh, and I could tell he was a happy guy. He was a happy man. Now his business, his business was pretty good, so that's important. But um, I could just tell he was very happy in his marriage. Thank you. Well, my next question is about emotional readiness, because when I'm uh, starting to work with some guys, um, many of them have all this like baggage from past relationships and you've mentioned about yours. Uh, so I do coaching sessions and uh, we work with their limiting beliefs and relation stereotypes and self-sabotaging behaviors. Gosh, it's like takes time to kind of make them alive again. And I see that like the guy isn't ready yet, but so you went through like a painful divorce and you shared some of your personal story with me and I know it hurt so um do you think now that you were ready then for committed relations when you met your wife how did you know that well it it been about the divorce was three years in arrears and you know like I say I was 50 years old when I met when I met my wife and um so there's baggage everybody's got baggage <laughs> right right but it's how you handle it what you do about it you know it. How, how bad is it you know i mean you know if you're a, if no. you're a felon on, and you're on a worldwide sexual predator list so that's a problem but as far as you know having been divorced and you know that kind of stuff i mean everybody's got right some baggage so do you think you were ready for relations then after having that baggage i was i was i I spent probably a year or so, and I, one thing I learned about the the online so-called international matchmaking business is it, it's a money pit, and and you can waste a lot of money and time. And you know, I was guilty. I mean, I get on there, and, and you know, I'm, I'm doing these so-called uh, letters through emails and through and, and most of these websites, you know, they find all these models and sign them up. And basically, I'm convinced that they're on a commission. And they're sending the same letter to 200 different guys around the world. I, I went through that. Right. And, you know, and I was looking for an attractive woman. Uh, my ex-wives were good looking women. So, and, you know, I, I was struck by, you know, that the women are very pretty. But... Mm -hmm. After I kind of sifted through that and, and I got acquainted with a a person like you in Kharkov mm -hmm. and ended up, you know, traveling to Kharkov and uh, got introduced to my wife who we had never shared a letter with. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, sparks just flew. But I, I yes, I was ready. By then I was ready. So what I'm actually asking is like ready means man has his life stability. Um, man knows what he wants. That's what I'm talking about. Man does not compare his present girlfriend with his ex-wife. So this is like, um, was it like that for you? Or you were like blaming women and looking for victims? <laughs> Well, good question. Uh, and and I, I sort of have a pet peeve myself about the discussing the ex thing. I mean, I don't like that. Right. I don't like that from my wife or my previous wives. And, and I work hard not to do that to them either. Right. They don't want to hear it. Right. <laughs> so, 
So, um, yeah, from that standpoint, and I think every time that you endeavor to have a new romance and, and entertain marriage, you're always looking at correcting the mistakes that you made before. And I, you know, hopefully as we get older, we get a little smarter. Something, so, yes. Um, yeah. But by the time I met um, Marina in Carco, I mean, yeah, I was, I was ready. I, this was the second trip I made to Ukraine and spent, you know, money traveling, dedicated the time off of work. You know, I, that was the second time I did that. So I wasn't over there on a, you know, sightseeing mission. Mm. I, I was, I was so serious. You were, so you were preparing yourself. You made a trip. You knew where you were going. You you planned things in advance. And apparently you had the resources for that. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Of course, my family, they... They were ready to shove me off the edge, but then they, they all thought I'd lost my mind. That was one of my questions, actually. So how did your family look at, it, at this endeavor? Um, they said, yes. Who, who was your family or who were your family then? Well, I had my, my teenage son. I had a 15-year-old son at home right. that I had custody of. Right. And, uh, he, and he and I were very close. And then we lived in the same town. I actually moved back to my hometown from California. This was in Missouri because I needed to be close to family because I was traveling in the job. And, and my mother and father lived there, same house I grew up in. And they became his de facto parents while I was gone. So, you know, and, and a lot of cousins, aunts and uncles lived there. So, you know my family and then of course my best friends and yeah they'd all thought I'd gone off the deep end. they, they kind of ridiculed me the first time and thought you know this is just a stunt and you know he's gonna we hope he makes it back alive and then I came back and that whole thing was a bomb and then six months later when I told them I was going to go back again they really thought I had a screw loose <laughs> Well, so you had zero support, right? Well, it's, it's not like they were mad at me, you know. Right. They just yeah, they like yeah, they well, wanted me to be they loud. wanted me to be happy. They didn't believe I was going about it right, but right. You know. But uh, what? How did it change later when they met your wife? I mean, oh. wife to be because apparently she went on a fiance visa, so they saw something else. Yeah, I'll never forget the day that I introduced her to my folks, especially my dad. She just melted him down immediately. And, you know, first thing out of her, first words out of her mouth when she met my dad was, can I call you dad? Or should I call you dad? I think it was. And he just, you know, he just, they didn't, they didn't know what to expect. And uh, that's how it only, they friends. knew she was younger, but they didn't know, you know, even if she could talk to him. So, you know, as soon as she broke the ice that away, it was all, oh, they're crazy about her now. Wow. And they're still living. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, you have a lot of a family then. Yeah. yeah. Well, we do call uh, parents mom and dad. So I call my husband. They are now mom and dad after my 26 years of being married to my husband. Like, well, it was kind of like, it was kind of the bringing the girlfriend in there for the first time, and then that's the first words out of her mouth. And, you know, and I mean, it just I could just tell she just melted dad completely down. You know, I recall my other couples, and that's exactly what they say. It's like almost quoting what you said. It's like they say, like, yeah, can I call you dad? It's like, wow, like. Who said that? Like, she didn't learn that because that's our way. Yes. So thank you for mentioning this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'll never okay. forget that. What about her parents? Have you met her parents? You know, that, when? And I was nervous about that because me and her dad are the same age. Uh -huh. And uh, and her mother's a year younger than me. Uh -huh. So it, it's kind of in the book where, you know, she took a long time to even tell him because she figured her dad would go through the roof. 
but they just by by the time I met them, they uh, welcomed me with open arms, and you know her her dad is kind of into in into cars. He, mm -hmm. He's he's actually a pretty good body repairman, and uh, and I'm I'm a car guy. I have you know I'm in the auto service software business now, but I had an auto shop when I was young. So I'm a car guy. So I could, I could just tell had we grown up together, either in America or there, we, we would be good friends. And it's still that way because they live here now. Ah, so you moved her parents. Uh, it took a few years, but yes, we, we brought them over here and uh, they live 10 miles from us. But now this is traditional family values from your end. Because that's what we do when we see, uh, well, people are far away and we just make things happen. Uh, when, when people really want to have good family and not to worry about the parents, about their health and their well-being. So, yeah. Well, and, and I had to agree at sort of a condition when yeah. I first met Marina that she wanted to go home generally every summer for maybe two months and visit. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was tough. That was hard on me. I mean, I didn't care for it. <laughs> <laughs> so you found a, lead, a smallest evil of moving her parents and not having her travel there, right? <laughs> That's kind of, kind of how it was. So really. smart I out mean, of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, right. So rather than have to deal with all of that every year and really every Christmas too, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they they had this long, you know, you folks have these long holidays. It kind of seem like they start the middle of December, and don't end till February. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, that that's probably the single thing that was the most difficult for me because I couldn't take off like that in my business. So. Right. Right. Uh, not not having my wife and young son home for Christmas, I didn't care for them. So, uh, anyway, at the end of the day, we brought her folks over here, and you know, and, and yeah, life's good. Okay, well, that's a story. That's really quite a story. But now uh, we 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 jumped into personal. I wanted to go back to that later, but now let's go back to dating, right? Do you mind? No. So, okay, you were searching online and you were the, that type of a guy who looked at the pictures, seeing beautiful girls, like, ah, oh. but then you met them in reality. And um, what about the photographs? Um, you know, well, when I show pictures, let, let me just say this. When I show pictures of a guy, he will just go for like the brightest photographs and say, no, you want to meet this girl? He says, oh, I don't like her pictures. So then I say like, go on a video date with him. I was like, I, I, I feel like I'm almost pushing him to see her. And then he says, yes, you were right. She's great. He's like, right. So what about all this picture, video, real date thing? Uh, how can I convince the guys that Ukrainian women are beautiful. What's your say on it? Well, like I'd mentioned before, you know, I was on the, the match.com thing for a while before I got onto the, your, you know, the U Ukrainian deal. I, I was on there, met a lot of gals. And uh, I learned that, and I, I'm probably guilty of this myself, but everybody kind of puts up, a presentation there and it's you have to my theory is you have to figure take about 30 percent either way they're either going to be up to 30 percent a lot better than their picture or 30 percent worse the chances of it being exactly like their picture is probably slim and and i figured out you know most of these websites that's their whole business model is, is to put all these so-called, uh, you know, photo models, my wife calls them, on there and just to draw in these communications where they make money. I mean, that that's their business model. Mm -hmm. And I'm guilty. I, I threw away a lot of money doing that before I finally decided, you know, to go over there. But the reason I went over there was to try to meet, you know, one of 
both times one of these gals that I've been you know coercing with and, and interfacing with online mm -hmm. so in both cases it 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 bombed so you have are you saying that you have to try you have to meet different people and you have to give it a chance or nowadays with technology we should use more like video meetings yeah we didn't have the video thing too much back then not sure how that would have worked out um you know, all of this doesn't matter whether it's pictures, videos, letters. That's just kind of an appetizer to get things started. But if I can advise the guys out here watching this, anything, make up your mind you're going to do this. Alli save up some money, allocate some time. You know, it can't be more, two or three days, you know, long as you can do. And then go over there and get acquainted with, uh, you know, a real agent like you. And, you know, get to know them. And you can get to know them on the phone and maybe in advance talking like we're talking. You can get to know that agent Let, because then she'll know you. And then she's got her clients and she knows them. And she, she'll start to get a feeling, you know, uh, is this the right guy for this gal and, and so forth. And um, and just go over there and spend the time and let the agent do her job. And I'm 100% I'm confident that if I had to do this again, even today, it wouldn't be a 27-year-old, but, but I, I would go over there and, and succeed. Right. I'm I'm convinced, but I would shortcut that whole process of throwing money down the drain on these, you know, all this other stuff. Right, right. So now my next question is meeting girls online or on dating apps or, or coming to a professional matchmaker. So you've already answered that. Uh, and uh, then you tried the, day, the apps and sites and then you went to a real agency. But is it worth the money? Um, I mean... Yeah, we charge the fees for the clients, but we do the work. So do you think it makes sense for a guy to go to a matchmaker? Just just tell, tell more of your experience of how it was when you were using dating apps, uh, well, and then websites, uh, and then when you went to a real agency in Kharkov. Well, I guess you, you might have to ask yourself, how how much would it be worth to find, you know, your soulmate and to have a, you know, have a happy marriage afterward, you know, put a price on it. And if you can't afford it, then just don't do, don't do it. You know, just keep doing what you're doing go down to the local bar and meet, you know, or meet the gal at Waffle House. I mean, whatever you think, but maybe you need to spend a little time, save your money, save up. It's not going to cost you a million dollars. Right. I, I'm not a, I'm not a super rich person. So, um, you know, I had I had to plan both of my trips and I had to budget for those, not only the cost of the trips, but I was being away from my business both time. That, that's all in my book, by the way. And um, yeah, I mean, that that's the way to do it. I, I would just shortcut the whole process. I'd concentrate more on getting uh, having a relationship with the agent and not necessarily the individual. But, you know, if the agent's got enough clients, which you would assume they do, you know, they're going to, they're no, they're going to know who's serious. They're going to know who's not. and They're going to get a feel for whether you're serious. You know, when I arrived in Kharkov, um, her name was Natalie too, I believe. And, uh, you know, uh, she had a client that looked just like Cindy Crawford. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I want to beat this guy. <laughs> and she just right away, she said, well, you know, uh, James, are, are you a, a wealthy person? I said, well, no, I do okay in my profession, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't be considered a, a rich person, not in my country. She said, well, James, you know, this girl is, kind of one that you Americans would refer to as high maintenance. But oh, I don't need that. So 
right. on to the next topic. And uh, so, yeah, it, she, she led me. I, it's almost, I kidded her before, uh, right up to the time that I met my wife. I said, are you getting an extra commission for this girl or something? Like, Why are you promoting her so much? <laughs> this is all outlined in the book, too, the way that all went down. And she said, no, I, she's, she's just perfect for you. And she turned because, out being right. Because we know this. When we work with people, you are right. She was a good matchmaker. Um, at that time, when she was giving you all this advice, that's how uh, I talk to gentlemen, understanding how he lives, what he does, what's his hobbies, you know, what is his budget, what, what he likes to do, and understanding how she would fit into his life. It's exactly the right thing that your matchmaker did. So that's a cool thing. Yeah, cool. You, you, you were lucky to find such a person. And, and now when you are saying that, um, that's the right thing to do, actually. So Exactly what, what the game plan should be. Yeah. Yeah. But then you went to Kharkov. Then you met the girl. And you were having not such a good experience because she said it was one thing but like she didn't have kids or something and that or or she just had one child and then she appeared to have two children and it was the whole Santa Barbara that you are writing in your book like any guy after having this kind of experience would say oh my god it's like you will take my money and things will fail anyway. Sometimes I hear it from guys. So what is your advice to that? You've been through, let's say, a failure in, on your first trip. Well, it, very good point. So I was crushed. Yeah. For one thing, this, this was in, this gal was from Odessa the first time I went to Odessa. And she was like a lot of them. I mean, you know, she had this beautiful photo, you know, she, she was a very nice looking gal and she was 10 years younger than me. And that's kind of about what I was looking for. And as soon as I arrived, I mean, we got along okay, but she spoke zero English like a lot of them. So we had to, it was all through a translator. And I guess she started asking too many questions about, my business and how much money I made. I mean, not that they should know that, but not, it, it seemed like that was dominating the conversation. So that was a red flag. And then she, she, she ended up, she had two kids and I think she only represented herself as having a daughter. This was bizarre. Mm -hmm. And the daughter was a teenager and she wanted to be a doctor. She was going to finish high school in Ukraine and go to, you know, to be a doctor. Good goal. Good girl. Smart. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. But then we got into the conversation about how much education and time you have to have to be a doctor in the United States. But doctors are very high paid professionals here. I mean, you know, I, oh, they just thought that was just unforetold that she'd have to go to school for eight or 12 years and you know, do all these, you know, that's just not the way things were done. So that was a problem. And then it came out that she had the other, turned out to be a little boy, but he was going to stay behind in Ukraine with his father. Mm -hmm. and, oh. and she and the daughter were going to move in. That was a big red flag. Because I, I began to visualize myself getting involved in some sort of an international parental dispute constantly and then the other thing is i'm like i don't think i don't think i could move to another country and leave a young son behind myself i just couldn't do that and that that sort of caused me to form judgments about her character right so you know i left kind of nothing we, we sort of had a loose plan of moving forward, but kind of not. And then once I got back home, we just kind of quit communicating. And I found myself, you know, I'm trying to talk myself into this looking good to me when something in the back of my mind told me something's not good about it. Oh, that's where I, you know, of course, my family, we told you so. We told you so. You, right. know, you shouldn't, you know. Right. So, 
So, you know, then I drifted for six months and then yeah. went back to hmm. end up going to Car Cove. And slowly we are going to my next question. So you met your present wife, which was way younger than you expected. You said you didn't even want to look at her pictures because she was that young. But she became your wife. So how did you know that she was the one? Tell us the story. Well, again, uh, I was at the agent in Kharkov, and it was almost like a catalog of gals I was looking through. You know, take yeah. your pick, you know, and that's where I brought up to Cindy Crawford, you know. And, mm -hmm. No, can't do that one. So, and I actually went to lunch and had dinner with, with an, an, another gal. Her name was Tanya, and she was a nice person, but again, I was the whole time I'm trying to talk myself into liking her. Mm. Oh, and no, you don't do that. Yes. That's a problem. Yes. So they could tell after I I met with Tanya that, you know, they're like, this American's so particular, you know, <laughs> he's, he's, he, we can't make him happy. And, but she kept bringing up uh, Marina's ad in the book, you know, and I just would blow by it because I said, ah, you know, she's, too young for me. I, I want somebody a little bit younger, not that much. And uh, okay. And then 10 minutes later, she'd go back. You need to, you need to meet this girl. And, uh, and that's where I brought up. I said, are you making extra money promoting? You know, what's going on here? You know, she's per she's perfect for you. She just kept saying she's perfect for you. So I said, okay, you know, just have lunch with me. So, all right, I'll I'll have lunch with her. It's a waste of time, but I'll, I'll have lunch. Yeah. So she gets on the phone. She's got a couple staffers working there, but she's I'll call her myself. So she calls her, and I'm, but but they're speaking in Russian language, so I have no idea what they're saying. We'll come to find out later. Marina said, "I don't want to meet this guy." He's 50 years old. Are you kidding? I don't want to meet this guy. He's too old for me. I don't I don't want to waste my time. And, and and Natalie was like, you have to meet. He's perfect for you. Trust me. I know this man. And she said, well, how do you know this man? Well, just trust me. I know this man. Why don't you just have lunch with him? Oh, well, I'll we have lunch with you. you both arms, putting your fingers in the door, like I'm pushing. I feel myself sometimes doing that to clients and they end up happy. Not well, anyway, I mean, so that was on a Saturday. Uh, we had lunch, and uh, one of her agents, a young man named Sergey, brought her over to the apartment I was staying. And uh, it was it was pretty much love at first sight for me. So it's a visual effect, right? You were very attractive. Well, she, she was pretty. And what and about her? How did she understand that? That, I don't know. Uh, right. I, I think she liked me right away because, um, you know, right right away she wanted to get a picture. I thought, well, you know, we got to have a picture as part of this process or a couple pictures. So I kind of took that as a good sign. And then mm -hmm. she's, we went to lunch and she's asking very good questions through the translator. How would you feel about having a child, you know, and, and, which was very important to her. She'd never been married, had mm -hmm. no kids. Mm -hmm. And I, I basically, I, I answered very honestly. I said, well, it's not something I need to do. Uh, how would I stop it anyway? <laughs> so, so, you know, we got past that and we just, we just clicked. I saw a certain, um, what's the right word? A certain uh, uh, innocence there. You know, there was no, it was a very, she, she came across as very honest. There's no hidden agendas. Uh, you know, it just, uh, and we spent four days together, which is all the time I had. And, uh, you know, I ended up proposing marriage to her on the fourth day using translation software on a laptop. Wow. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. What, what did you say? Well, you know, you back then that translator software wasn't perfected. Uh-huh. 
and as, as I'm sure you know, do you speak the Russian language or the Ukraine or both? Both. Okay. Yep. So the Russian language, they structure sentences different than we do. Yes. So if you do a word to word translation, and when they translate the sentence or the paragraph, it, it doesn't say exactly the same thing as what you intended. So I, you know, the meter's running. I mean, uh, you know, I, I got on my laptop. It's pretty emotional. And, and we're in my apartment and she's getting ready to go home and I'm flying out the next day. And uh, so I got on my laptop and I, I, I said, you know, this isn't like a normal, uh, you know, relationship. I'm not coming back here next weekend to take you out on another date. You know that, correct? That, that came out okay. And she responded, yes, I know that. So I wrote in there, how did I word it? Would you like to come to America and be my wife? And it came across as, well, do you want to be my wife or not? <laughs> Say no, kind of, yes or no. Yeah, she she looked at it and she kind of. So she, and I was kind of worried because what if I what do I do? She says no. <laughs> so she wrote back and she says, well, it's a big decision. I have to think about. It. So I just immediately got on her and I said, no problem. You've got about ten minutes. <laughs> and uh, it, it, and I could tell that she was trying to stop from laughing. And uh, she studied for a couple of seconds and then put on there, let's do it. And that's the way it all, that's the way it went down. Wow. I can, I can almost imagine this. I think she says, let's try it. Yes. Yeah. Something like this. Wow. I, oh. You know, throughout the four days, I don't think she had any fear of me personally. And I always wondered, you know, that thought process because that's got to be, and to me, it's not that big of a risk. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not afraid of her, you know, I mean, yeah, we could get over to the United States and, you know, she could, she can just kind of drive me crazy, but I, I'm not afraid of her. Yeah. You've but had from, two wives before, right? So it was like proof. <laughs> but, but from the standpoint of a young woman, I could see where they've got a natural uh, yeah. fear about it. Yeah. Especially now with all this social media, they uh, they read yeah. about all these horror stories and oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. they're out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, I, I think by that time, in, in both directions, we had no, we had no fear. Mm -hmm. of anything bad yeah. so that that helped and uh, yeah we put plans in motion so quite frank and yep. quite frankly uh natalie when i got on the plane and left i mean i was so just thrilled about what was going on and my trip back was a disaster um you know that the, the airport and all that process in farco i mean it was almost like dealing with the KGB and they mm -hmm. give me a real hard time because my suitcase weighed, I don't know, four, four kilograms more than it did when I got there. Well, why is that? I had no idea what they were talking about. So, and then I get to get the uh, Kiev and uh, electric in my apartment won't work. <laughs> and, you know, it's cold and winter, you know, mm -hmm. it's late November. That was a disaster. And then I get to Amsterdam middle of a snowstorm canceling all the flights took me nine hours to get my flight changed they put me up in a cheap closet sized hotel all that happened on it didn't bother me you know it's like i wasn't even thinking about it so i was so i was so happy about you know that whole thing but i think in in marina's mind she didn't know if this is really going to come to fruition i mean we still had a lot of steps and we weren't going to see each other for six eight months and you know, i made it plain that i'm not coming back until you have your visa interview mm -hmm. it's probably going to be six months at least i don't she didn't really think this was going to happen i mean she was hoping it would but and she didn't tell her folks 
anything. Right up until they didn't know anything about me until three days before I flew back to get her and go to the go to the embassy. They didn't know anything about me. It's very Ukrainian. Yes, we keep secrets till till the last <laughs> moment. Yeah, because we we are afraid to scare the luck, as we say. Yeah, <clears throat> big plans. We well, announce. I think she's probably and her dad had had a couple of minor strokes, and I think. Oh. In her own mind, it's like, why shake dad up until <laughs> I, I, know, I know for sure this is going to happen. <laughs> right, right. Okay, then you came, you met her parents, you made it work, you liked each other, and then you brought your fiancé to America. And when she arrived, what was it like for her? So my next question, were there any cultural differences that you had to by bypass beginning a new love story, a new relations, the true relations later? And uh, did she need help? And what kind of help she needed to adapt to your culture? How did she feel about it? Did she like it or she hated it or she had to make a lot of compromises? Actually, uh, good question. The first couple of days, I didn't know if she's going to make it. Uh -huh. She was just in such culture shock because all of a sudden she's in a foreign country. Nobody speaks her language. So, you know, she, she don't has no, and she doesn't know what they're saying, maybe what they're saying about her. And she was like in a, in a state of shock for a couple of days. And I, I'll never forget that second day I had to drive to St. Louis on my business. And I just kind of knew that I'm going to come home tonight and she's going to tell me that she wants to go home. I mean, but bless her heart, my mother was so helpful mm -hmm. that she would, you know, go pick her up and take her out to breakfast and meet the cousins and aunts and, you know, and, and my mom was just wonderful like that. And, uh, and Marina, you know, after she got over the first couple of days and she got on that, I think that Skype was working back then. She'd get on there and talk to her parents and yeah, you know, they they uh they were encouraging when they talked to her. So, you know, mm -hmm. you just got there, you know, do you really want to come back here and you know, and all this kind of stuff. And she made up her mind that she's she's gonna learn English and she dove into it. I couldn't believe how quick she learned speakable in English. Mm. Yeah. But some some of the culture uh uh, shock that she was comical. It's like what? For example, uh, you know, it's it's in our custom when you go to the grocery store or a, any place of business. You know, they'll they'll say thank you, have a nice day when when you conclude the business. The first time we went to the supermarket and we're rolling our grocery carts out the parking lot, you know, full full of stuff. Marine is like. What's the matter with that girl? She doesn't even know me. How's she know I'm going to have a nice day? <laughs> and then the whole thing, you know, I guess in Ukraine, I don't know if it's still that way. They don't no. tip. No, no. You know, we, uh, we now wish a nice day. And now things have changed after 15 years. That was 15 years ago, right? Or 16, something like that. 17 years ago. Seven, ah, so it's what, what, 2007? 2006. Six, yeah. 16, oh. I guess 16, 16 years. Right, yeah. Yeah, and, so. So what did you say about the tip? Well, when we were leaving Ukraine and the, the folks, I, I guess this was, um, yeah, her folks drove up to Kiev to kind of wish her off when she had her, uh, we, I rented a little apartment there by the embassy. Mm -hmm. So they came up and we had the big, you know, family going on. They're meeting their future son-in-law and all that stuff. Right. And we go out, you know, to a nice restaurant. And that was a culture shock, too, because, you know, they never spent that much money <laughs> at a restaurant ever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I probably left 15 percent tip or something. I, I, I thought her dad was going to come unglued. I thought I was crazy. <laughs> In fact, he tried to he tried to stop it. Uh huh. You no, know, I was paying cash. Right. At this, 
No, 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 no. <laughs> we got almost a big dispute. I felt sorry for the waitress. She's she's just innocent. Like, what did I do wrong? And, you know, and I said, no, this is what we do in America. I said, you, you know, yeah. you tell this young lady, we had a translator, you tell this young lady that this is a present for America. Right. And uh, her dad just like thought I was crazy. I mean, he he told Marina, he said, you know, uh, we can see that James is generous. I hope he's not too generous for his own good. <laughs> now, now, going going back to America, well, how did you help her settle? What did you do so she felt at home? Your, your mom helped. She started learning English. Was there anything else that helped uh, her like America, or adapt there, feel herself home? Well... I had to bite my tongue on a few things because, you know, they have their own decor ideas that are different than ours. And they don't, you don't collect things over there. You know, we collect things here. Like, for example, I'm a, I'm a big motorsports guy and I have all kinds of motorsports, uh, you know, stuff like, you know, like, like these things uh -huh. all over, all over the house. Uh -huh. And she just, what a total waste. <laughs> She's wanting to put all my stuff, in, you know, in the attic. <laughs> oh, my God. And, you know, and, and just totally different ideas on decor. And, and I just kind of let her go and let her decorate the house pretty much like she wanted. And I, we finally, we compromised. I said, you know, you, do, you can do the, the main floor however you want. Don't touch my basement. <laughs> now I see all this memorabilia behind your back with your book right there. Um, if you uh, right behind your back is is the book, right? Yes. Yeah, there's the. Uh, let's see. Yes, yes, they're right there. Yeah, you can yes. see it. Yeah, yeah I there's can the see book. It. You know, there's my old uh, vintage yeah. stereo, and uh, yeah. 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 If I can, let's see. That here's a couple. I don't know if I can. Those pictures are yes. actually of events of, of me and her yeah so but, this is very very american yes i can see that but something else you did something else can you share do you have this special secret recipe of your success come on well i think i think it's important that you've always as a couple need to have something that you look forward to you know, it can be a new house, which is can't do that every, every year, but it can be a, a vacation, big or small. But you, I think you always have to plan something, something that you look forward to. Now, once she got pregnant with, with Stephen, that took care of that for a while. <laughs> I mean, that was a big, th big thing. And really something to look forward to so self-planning adventure <laughs> yeah you don't have to you know purposely design everything i mean that you know there for the longest time even that was it which is fine with me but normally uh we just recently took a nice vac vacation to colorado and I, i'd lived in colorado before but she had never been there you know that's the big rocky mountains and stuff she loved it so, and, and we planned this back in, uh, I think, June. This was for my birthday, really. I always joked about it. You know, she always gets something for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good plan. And, uh, you know, that's another thing that, uh, you know, you folks, these birthdays are such a big deal for you, regardless how, you know, with in our culture it's mostly for the kids you know oh i don't need anything and we don't don't need a big celebration well they, they thought that was kind of odd so we do the big birth regardless whose it is and when it is we do the big birthdays and and holidays in general you know holidays for for her and for your for ukrainian culture is always a big family deal uh we've gotten away from that and Marina made an observation a few years ago. She said, I finally figured this out why, you know, certain holidays are not so, 
you know, important to you Americans because you're on holiday every weekend, <laughs> which is kind of true. I mean, we're always, yeah, that's kind of true. We're we're kind of spoiled, right. but she got kind of spoiled with it. Nice. That's really, really, really nice. Now, winding up this whole conversation. And making the intrigue uh, to read your book for the gentlemen that are going to watch this video, I would like to say that there is a message. There is a strong message you put there. And uh, I would like you to share it. Uh, what do you want the readers to take from your book? Well, I think uh, there's probably a couple of them. But if, once you become middle-aged, I'll use that term, or even more so, you know, I'm, I'm older than middle age now. Um, it's never too late to, to find that special person. I mean, it's, you know, she may not, she may not be in your subdivision, but, but, and we struggle, you know, I think society struggles with technology and all the, you know, everything is not, we don't see it as a positive. We're always talking about the good old days, but now it's opened up the world so much that you're not restricted to your own town or your own county or your own place you work. Or if you go to college or college, you're not restricted to that. Um, you know, the whole world is a, is an open catalog almost. And you, if you got the will, you can do anything you want. One of my best friends, he, he married a lady from the Philippines. <laughs> And uh, quite a process yep. because we had uh, the government's had some sort of a visa problem for a while. And he went through a lot, but he finally, you know, but he was committed. Yep. And uh, like me, he went through a pretty tough divorce and drifted for a few years. And so I guess the the main take I would would out of the book is, hey, you can endeavor to succeed. If you want to, you can find that special person. And, uh, you know, the gals over there, they kind of have the family values that that guys in my generation grew up with that we it's hard to find here. And uh, that, that's really probably the single. And I noticed that about uh, Victoria, you know, my insurance guy's wife. Uh, that's kind of what struck me mm -hmm. is. Uh, you know, I grew up in a, you know, fortunately for me, I, you know, my mom and dad, you know, they've been married a year, year longer than I've been on this earth and, um, you know, grew up in the same house, always had dinner together, you know, mm -hmm. breakfast together and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and you, you don't find that now locally. It's very difficult. <clears throat> So it's there if you, you know, as long as you got the right plan and the willpower. Right. So having the right plan, going for the unknown, looking beyond the borders. First of all, beyond the borders of your imagination, understanding there is a better life, right? Correct. Correct. Cool. And now all you can do, the best thing you can do is read the book Miracle from Ukraine from James Herbert Harrison. The link to this book is in the description to this video. Uh, learn an experience of a brave guy who went and did it. Nowadays, it's much easier because, first of all, you have technology. Second, you have me as a supportive matchmaker. And you can simply come and talk to me and see whether you feel that you can trust your introductions to my hands. Or maybe find somebody else that you can trust and go for it but have support. That's my message. And try. I would agree. Try. I would agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because you, you never know till you try. There are no guarantees in relationships. They're actually the only guarantee in life we have that it one day we're going to die. That's it. That's true. <laughs> the yeah. rest is up to us. How we make it work how we create everything, how how feel, uh, we live this life, that it is bright, that it is 
interesting, that it tickles our nerves, that it rushes the adrenaline, that it gives us emotions, and it's all about love. So my message today, and thanks to James, we've spoken about love. There is a lot of love in his book, love to people, love to Ukraine, uh, love to all possible future that you can create yourself if you go for it. Couldn't say it better myself. So love from Ukraine, from Natalie's office, and love from Kansas. I enjoyed it. Thank you for your time, James. And hopefully see you someday in America. When I travel to your area, I will certainly not let you know. Dinner's on me. Oh, then I have to come. <laughs> I actually have a couple in your town. So, and I baptized their son. So definitely I'm coming someday. Oh. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. You're good? Yeah, hang on. Oh.